Filibuster. <laughs> tell more stories about you. Exactly. No, that'd be great. <laughs> well, actually, I'll tell you one other thing. I was, I was saving that for the 11 a.m. service. But, you know, Tim's got an incredible conversion story. He was, he was uh, raised kind of Catholic, agnostic-ish. <laughs> uh, definitely not raised Seventh-day Adventist. He converted to Seventh-day Adventism. And uh, I think to put it mildly, he did not have the support of his family, his full family. Uh, I think they were actually quite opposed to it. So... But God worked out so many miracles, even the way he got to medical school. And uh, listen, I'm still paying off my medical school debt. Uh, but Tim graduated without any medical school debt. He worked partway through medical school, which is something few people have done. Um, so tremendous respect for how God has worked in his life. And really, uh, I think he put God to the test. And God just opened up doors and worked miracles for him. So... Um, Soren has been blessed in many other ways. <laughs> he, he does have some medical school debt, but his real debt is to the Lord who has prospered him. And God has given me, God has blessed us in tremendous ways and so grateful for that. Is your mic on? Just make sure it's on. All right. And let's bow our heads for prayer. All right. Father in heaven, thank you so much for all your blessings. Thank you for the message we heard last night. And Lord, we pray for Dr. Riesenberger that you would... Um, anoint his lips and preach a message from on high. Help our hearts to be open to hear your message. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, so here's my question for those who were here last night. How many more years can you live above the average? If you're, wow, you didn't even know what the question was. <laughs> Guys are that smart. That's great. She's one of the A students, right? Exactly. But I think it's more than just a concept of living longer here. You know, the blue zones are what may draw someone in, may pique their curiosity and say, well, you know, what's going on? But I think people need more than that, and they're looking for more than that. Um, they're looking for meaning in their lives, not just uh, living a few extra years, because, you know, many people actually live a long time now with medical technology, but we haven't actually improved quality. Did you know that? A lot of people don't know that the majority of your healthcare dollars are spent in the last year of your life. Did you know that? I mean, how, how good is that to be in the nursing home, to have like arthritis and diabetes and, you know, heart disease, congestive heart failure, can't walk around, right? Nobody wants that, right? And what we found is that a lot of these individuals that are in these blue zones, they tend to get the same diseases, but they kind of just drop off the cliff. They kind of just get sick and then they just die. And that's kind of what all of us want to do. My grandfather died in his sleep, in his own home, no nursing home, in actually my home, technically it was my home, but he was living in my home, not in a nursing home, and the last thing is you can get an open Bible on his easy chair. I mean, isn't that how everybody wants to go? I mean, that's how you want to go, right? Now, obviously, my grandmother wasn't excited about that because nobody knew he was going to go because he had no problems, right? He, had, he didn't, didn't even use a cane. So, but we look back at it, and probably that is the way he wanted to go uh, without any dependence or disability. But we all think about what's beyond, right, this life. And does anyone know what this picture is? Anyone have to know what it is? The what? Oh, yeah, it's a helix nebula. And uh, the common name is the eye of God, right? And what's interesting is that the reason why they call it the eye of God is that, well, it kind of looks like an eye, right? <laughs> so it's kind of like that. And there's a lot of things in the natural world that people have difficulty explaining. But they've tried, right? There's, there's really uh, the most common five belief systems of the world have tried to explain why things are the way they are, how things started. Can anyone name the five belief systems, top five? I'll give you a hint. It's not Adventist. We're not up there, so... I wish, but no. 
Yeah, Catholicism, sure. Now, what's interesting that Soren mentions Catholicism, if Catholicism was removed, Christianity wouldn't be in the top five. Did you know that? Because 1.2 billion people are Catholics. Anything else? Sure, Islam. Islam, if you removed uh, Catholicism from Christianity, Islam would be number one. The most common name in the world, Muhammad. Did you know that? Yeah. So what else? Buddhism, absolutely. Yeah, most, much of Asia is, is Buddhist. Anything else? Atheism, sure, yeah. That's actually a belief system, right? And, and most people who are atheists, how do they believe everything came into being? Sure, evolution. Natural selection, survival of the fittest, stuff like that, right? And then, of course, we have someone mentioned Hinduism, which is kind of like everything goes. Jesus, yeah, I'll accept Jesus. I'm just going to put him up on the shelf with the 387 other gods that I worship. So, right? Those are the top five belief systems. But here's the question. How do you decide which is truth? Many of us are physicians, professionals, things like that. And we go by the weight of evidence. Now, what we're finding is that that evidence has unfortunately been quite biased in some ways, right? So how do you really decide? Because a lot of people think that faith is what you need, right? If you need faith for religion, you need to just have faith. But I think that God desires that our faith be intelligent and based on something intelligent. Can someone tell me if they know someone who does not believe as they do? Anyone know somebody or in their family that does not believe as you do? So I would like you to think about this and maybe think about how God wants us to reach people. And um, this is actually one of my favorite passages from Desire of Ages. God does not compel men to give up their unbelief. Before them are light and darkness, truth and error. It is for them to decide which they will accept. The human mind is endowed with power to discriminate between right and wrong. God designs that men shall not decide from impulse. What's impulse? How you feel. Exactly. Impulse is, hey, this is how I feel. You know, this is how I roll. My family was like this. I grew up like this. Or, you know, I found that this works for me, right? People will say something like that. Um, not decide from impulse, but by what? The weight of evidence. God is not against science in its truest sense. All true science is in harmony with his word. Just remember that. All true science is in harmony with revelation. Because if there's ever a conflict, let me tell you right now, you know who's eventually going to lose out? Science, so-called. I always tell people, don't bet against a prophet. You will always lose. Just FYI. That's spoiler alert for you, okay? You will eventually find out that that little third grade education lady wasn't just third grade education. But God wants us to design uh, our belief systems after a weight of evidence. And that's the question. What, what weight of evidence is there for Christianity, for this statement? Is it a big statement? What do you think? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created everything. Wow, that's a huge statement, isn't it? Do you think that should have some evidence behind it? Absolutely. I think it should have some evidence behind it. And there's nothing wrong with looking for that evidence. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, what? What is the first thing he said? Let there be light. And there was light. And here's the key. And God saw that the light was what? Good. So why does God create things? What reasons? Good, right? So you have to think about that. We were talking this morning with the kids, and we said, why do you think there's blueberries and raspberries in these cold climates? That's an interesting question. And if you don't know the real reason, you can ask Lucas. He'll tell you. Right? So, so good, right? God creates things for good reasons, but also God creates things for other reasons. God himself that formed the earth and made it, he has established it, he created it not in vain. He formed it for what reason? To be inhabited, right? So in the Christian paradigm, God creates things for what reasons? Good reasons. And the earth is designed for who? Us, mankind. But do we see evidence of that? That's the question. 
What's very interesting, do you know if we were just a little closer to the sun, we'd burn up? Just a little further, we'd be really cold? You know we'd be underwater if the moon was a different distance from us? Did you know that? So we go through the days of creation. When we look at the fish, the birds, the animals, the evolutionary model says that Leo the lion has claws and fangs. Why? So he can eat meat, right? But how do you get away from Leo the lion if you're an animal? How do you avoid being eaten? There's there's pretty much six ways, and it's interesting, it was only three ways until I presented this in Academy, and they came up with like all these creative ways, like kids are so smart, you know? We like are stuck in the box. Kids are like way outside the box. So think of some ways, how do you get away from this guy and prevent from being eaten or uh, lunch? The what? Stay in the truck. Stay in the truck. No, 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 I'm talking about an animal. You can't, you don't own a truck if you're an animal. But yes, that's true. That's true. Don't get out of the truck if you're a human being. Otherwise, you'll be lunch. You can run, so you have to outrun him. How else? He's pretty fast over short distances, though. That's the thing. Well, how else? Fly. Oh, that's good. I like that. What else? Camouflage. Very good. So you have to hide or have camouflage. So what's very interesting is, is a general rule, yes, that's the concept, but we don't always see that evolutionary model, right? It's hard to hide in the savanna in your tuxedo, right? Have you wondered about that? I mean, how, how does that work, right? Did you know that some animals aren't designed for their own survival, but they're actually designed for your survival as a human being? How many people own a dog? How many people have a cat? How many people love dogs? How many people have cats? How many people love both? How many people love neither? Don't raise your hand, please. Don't have me talk to you. You don't want to talk to me afterwards. Man, why do you got to be like that, you know? Come on. So did you know that if you give a dog, and how many people know someone with high blood pressure? Anyone with high blood pressure? No, anyone? Did you know if you give a dog to them, their blood pressure will go down almost as much as a medication? How does that work? They're not exactly sure. How many people have grown up with a dog? <laughs> grown up with a dog in the house, like from square one, like you always have had the dog, like you always had a dog, ah, a few people. Did you know if you grow up with a dog that your biome is different? Did you know that? Your flora is completely different. Did you know that you have less allergies on average, less autoimmune diseases? Did you know that? These guys seem to be designed not just for themselves, but for you, doesn't seem to fit the evolutionary model, right? But fits closer to God's design that the earth was for man. All was good. Let's take a look, though, at something else. God causes the grass to grow for the cattle and plants for who? The service of man. But do we see that in the plant kingdom? Do we see that the plants were specifically designed for you and I? Well, let's take a look at just a few. How many people like flowers? Raise your hand. But why do you like flowers? Give me some reasons. So the colors, right? Lots of different colors, right? And they're nice colors. They're not like brown or gray or like puke green or whatever, right? What, what, uh, what else are the reasons you like it? Smell, the fragrance is really nice. By and large, most flowers smell good, right? At least to you and I, right? Three, give me a specific, more specific thing about beauty. Does anyone know what the Fibonacci series is? It's a series of numbers that is very attractive to your mind. It's geometry, symmetry, mathematics. Did you know that all of nature is ruled by math? Did you know when the fern branches? Did you know when the lightning bolt splits? It's all ruled by math. Did you know that? Every, every last bit of it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So you like flowers because of color, fragrance, and symmetry, geometry, shape, something like that, kind of that broad category. But how do flowers reproduce? Yeah, p pollen, bees, right? Sure. But how do the bees find them? They used to be able to find by smell, but there's too much pollution now. 
So they can't depend on that. That's our fault. So how do they find the flowers? No, they don't see those colors. Did you know that? Isn't that interesting? How do they find them? Did you know that the bees see the reflected ultraviolet light from the flowers? And all they need is a food source, reflected ultraviolet light, that's it. You can have a dish of square sugar water that reflects ultraviolet light, that's all you need. Isn't that funny? That's why when the bee comes up to you, it's around you for just a little while. When it doesn't find its food source, it's out, right? Because you might reflect some ultraviolet light with whatever shirt you're wearing. But if you don't have a food source, it's not going to stay there. So here's my question. If the bees don't need those three complex things that attract you to the flowers, why are they like that? What do you think? For us, I, you don't seem that confident. You're like saying, us? Maybe, right? You don't see that confident. I believe that when you look at this, you get an idea, right? This is actually an invention from Poland. Does anyone know what this is? It's a piece of paper, basically. Just, no, I wasn't trying to trick you. It's a piece of paper. But what's this stuff here? What do you think? Someone's got a black light, and they're moving it over the piece of paper. So someone has put some circles in the ultraviolet spectrum. And they've also laced that paper with a little glucose. So when you throw away the paper, what happens? Who finds it? The bees, right? And they eat it up and, hey, look, you're green, right? But that's the thing. The bees don't need a flower. They can just go for the paper, right? They're not dependent on the level of complexity that attracts you to the flower. So that's my question. Why are the flowers the way they are? What do you think? Well, you sounded a little better, but not quite as good. Let me ask you this question. How many people have kids? Raise your hand. Do you know what attracts a child more than anything else? What pattern? Does anyone know what pattern a child is attracted to more than anything else? A face. Who said face? That's right. It's a face. Two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. Also, screens are really attracted to kids. Mm, mm, right? Don't do that, though, because you'll ruin their brains. I didn't get my first smartphone till I was done at Stanford. I was done with all my education, right? I still had a chocolate bar phone. They're like, Riesenberger, you got to come out of the Stone Age. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm convinced about these smartphone things. You know, anytime you have somebody lined up around the building, right, to get their iPhone, right, I'm not so sure. I, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, right? Isn't that what the Bible says? No. Anyway. <laughs> So that's the thing, is that whenever there's so many people doing a bunch of things, I always question it. But that's true in finance, too. When you ever see a bunch of people go in one direction, you generally want to be the person on that other side. You know what I'm saying? And that's true not only in that, but many times spiritual things. So anyway, when you look at the concept of a flower, and to try to say, try to make an argument of this for you, I mean, I don't know. I, I think there's more compelling arguments. In fact, when you look at the baby, right, it being attracted to the face, that's actually hardwired from the beginning. That's opposed to imprinting. Does anyone have chickens? Have chickens? What if the chicken hatches right at your feet? What happens? You're the chicken mom, right? So that's imprinting, right? So we're not imprinted, we're hardwired. Chickens are imprinted, right? So when you understand brain anatomy and physiology, you are hardwired to look for that face. So here's my proposition. If God really wanted to tell you that he designed the flower for you, he could just take a flower, you know, put a smiley face on it, have a nice day. True or false? Could he, could he do that? Theoretically, yes or no? And actually, he did. <laughs> Photoshop? How many people think it's Photoshop? How many people think it's not Photoshop? Oh, good, you're so trusting. Praise the Lord. I appreciate that. So this is a monkey orchid. It grows at elevations of 1,000 to 2,000 feet in South America, and it has a face. But my question is, why? Why, why? why is that there? How does that benefit the flower? It does not. That's the whole point, right? But you and I not only see a face, but you see what kind of face? You see a monkey's face, right? It's even that specific. It's a species of baboon. 
You know, it's interesting. I presented this presentation for a group of pure atheists. Everyone in the audience was atheist, every last one of them. And one of them was an artist, so I kind of engaged her at the end. I said, what did you think about the presentation? Oh, it was nice. And I said, well, what do you think about the monkey orchids? She's like, oh, well, the, the face there doesn't prove anything. And I said, well, what do you mean? Well, why does the monkey have that face? Well, it might not even be a face. And I'm like, it might not be a face? Can you explain that? And they said, well, it's only our Western culture that causes us to see a face. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, are you smoking crack? <laughs> but I didn't actually say that. I resisted that. And I said, well, can you, can you explain that to me a little bit? She said, yeah, sure, yeah. Somebody in South America or China, they might look at that and they might not see a face. And I thought to myself, are you injecting crack? <laughs> but I didn't say that either. And I said, can you explain that? She's like, uh, well, you know, they might see something else. And I said, and what might they see? She's like, well, I don't know. I'm not Chinese. And I like saying, last time I checked, we had two eyes, a nose, and a mouth, just like you. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know where she was at. But it just, it just tells you that evidence is sometimes not enough. Right? Have you ever tried to reason with someone and you're like talking to a brick wall? Sometimes it's not enough. But when you look at this, you have to ask yourself, well, why? I mean, did that just randomly? Let's say that randomly came together, okay? Okay, we'll give you that. Maybe there's one fluke out there, right? How many of your kids are starting to draw? How many of your kids have started to draw, can, can draw? Any of them have artist kids? So when they first started to draw, what did they start drawing? Mm, face is pretty complex. What did they draw before that? Yeah, stick figures. What were they trying to draw? You. Yeah, human beings, right? So they drew stick figures. That's also something that's hardwired into human being. The hominid figure, which is an upright figure with two arms, two legs, a trunk, and a head. That is hardwired into your kids from day one, and it's also hardwired into nature. And if you think that's just random, let me show you some other ones. And if you still think that's random, I'll show you some female ones. <laughs> they wear dresses. I'm just saying. If you have a problem with that, take it up with the author. What does that look like? Yeah, it looks like a baby. But do you know it's a plant? It's like a flower? What does that look like? Wow. Did you know that's not even a flower? That's not like, there's no nectar in the middle of that. It's just a frond of the plant. Yeah, what is that? You see anything? A little tiger? Sure, I see that. What do you see there? A bird? I see a quail. What do you see there? An ant? Why would you see an ant? That doesn't look like an ant. That doesn't look like an ant. What does that look like? Ellie's convinced that it's an ant. Are you, do you think it's an ant? No? What do you think it looks like? Yeah, it looks like a duck. It actually looks like a mallard duck. It's a species of duck. Did you know that? Do you see anything there? Do you know you can get that flower at Trader Joe's? It's just a regular orchid, but it's uncanny because what are you seeing there? Do you think that's just an optical illusion? How many people think that's just random optical illusion? How many people think that's designed? I agree with you because it's present in other flowers too. What does it look like that flower is doing? Praying, right? And what's the most important thing to pray for? What's the most important gift God can give you? Yeah, children, that's so sweet, yes. But anyway, I don't have that most important gift yet. No sleep, hashtag, right? Salvation, no. What's the most important gift? This gift brings all other gifts in its train. I'll give you the quote. No, the yeah, Holy Spirit, right? And did you know that this is the bud stage? This is the blossom stage. Bud stage, blossom stage, no joke. How does that help the flower? It does not. And it only blossoms on the day of Pentecost. No, just kidding. I, I don't know. I don't know. Somebody told me that. I haven't verified that yet, but I think that's probably a little stretch. So, But ask now the beasts, and they shall teach you. Who are the beasts? Animals, right? And the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee. Or speak to the earth. Anyone have plants? Plants? Do you talk to your plants? Don't lie. Don't lie. Anyone talk to their plants? Did they talk back? Do I need to talk to you afterwards? No, just kidding. <laughs> so the plants, right? And they will teach you. And the fishes of the sea shall declare unto you. Anyone pet fish? 
pet fish? Anyone ever pet fish? What did he say to you? Did he ever say anything to you? No? But the Bible here says that he will declare unto you. And what will they declare? Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? So what are the animals, the plants, the fishes, and the birds all telling you? That God is creator, right? But is that the message that we see? Let's take a look. Who likes art? You like art? Okay, great. How many people like sculpture? Sculpture? Okay. Sculpture? Great. When you take your kids to the beach, what do they all make? Sandcastles, of course. They all make sandcastles, right? Now, what's very interesting is that the artist for this particular sandcastle was not discovered until the late 70s, early 80s. Did you know that? Very interesting. And the artist is very intriguing because they tried to find the artist. They never could find the artist. They kept trying to find the artist. And finally, with some cameras, they, they caught the artist. And uh, the artist is a fish. Isn't that crazy? I don't know if you can hear him. Can you hear him? It's supposed to be sound. No sound? That's okay. I'll give you, I'll extend probation for you in the back. I'll give you another opportunity. Probation is lingering for you, my brethren. Okay, let's do this. Can you guys see a video? No? See a video? No? Can you see a video? Okay. Eep. You guys have sound ready? You okay back there? Check. Try it. Oh, I have to change. So it's my fault. I'm sorry. I tried to, I tried to throw you under the bus. Come on. I'm the guest, right? So, okay. They're like, no, sir. Change the output. But I changed this yesterday. It doesn't automatically do it. No, it's on that output. It was there. They tried to blame me. Did you see that? Come on, man. I'm the guest. You got to cut me some slack. Throw me a bone. Throw me some bone broth. No, just kidding. That's another lecture. All right. I'm pushing it specifically. Is that okay? Is that all right? Can I try it now? Right. Unfortunately, this small Japanese pufferfish is dull, almost to the point of invisibility. But to compensate, he is probably nature's greatest artist. What religion is David Attenborough, just by the way? Does anyone know? He's atheist. Can you believe that? Dude, how can you narrate this kind of stuff and be atheist? I don't know, but we'll see. You'll, see his, you'll hear his atheism. To grab a female's attention, he creates something that almost defies belief. What was the reason for it? Did you catch that? Grab the female's attention. His only tools are his fins. In his head, a plan of mathematical perfection. He plows the sand, breaking it up into the finest of particles. These shells aren't just rubbish to be removed. He uses them to decorate the bridges of his construction. Watch this area right now. It's going to be important later. Take a look at this shot. He can't rest for more than a moment, but must work 24 hours a day for a week, or the current will destroy his creation. And you thought residency was bad. A final tidy up, and his masterpiece is complete. So 
So the puffer fish is about 15 centimeters long, but he makes a structure that's two meters in diameter, and it's the most complex structure in the whole world. Even though he's not the smartest or brightest bulb in the ocean, whales are much smarter, dolphins are much smarter, an octopus has the problem-solving ability of a five-year-old child, but it's the puffer that makes the most amazing structure in the entire world. Nowhere else in nature does an animal construct something as complex and perfect as this. If this doesn't get him noticed, nothing will. Did you hear it come through again? A little atheism there? A little commentary? That's all right. So, what's very interesting is that when you ask scientists about the puffer, I think it's very intriguing because they'll say stuff like Attenborough, right? What's well, to grab a female's attention? But what they don't tell you is that pufferfish are in all oceans of the world, but only in one location does it make this structure. So my question is, well, don't the other pufferfish need to attract the female's attention too? Well, they don't get a little structure, right? How do they do that? The other thing they'll say is that the structure is for protecting the eggs, okay, from washing away. Because once the female's attracted, they mate and they lay the eggs in the structure. Very romantic, right? Little home, right? Now, where would be the best place to lay the eggs to protect it from washing away? Think, remember carefully what I told you to look at. Not the center, actually. Did you see the ridges on the outside? There were like some really deep furrows. Did you notice that? That would be the best protected way. But you're right. They lay it in the, in the center. From a human standpoint, the center would be the coolest place to lay them right? But that would be the dumbest place evolutionary-wise because it's like eh, 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 free lunch, right? Why, why would you do that, right? Why would you lay it right in the center? I mean, everything could go for that, right? And the other thing, again, is, is that don't other pufferfish need to protect their eggs? But again, this is only laid in one location. Anyone want to guess what the most atheist nation is by percentage, not by numbers, but by percentage, by their own interviews? Nope. No, not Czech Republic, but... See, a lot of those former communist nations, there's a lot of underground Christianity, and people were tired of that stuff. That's why Romanians are like the most committed Adventists, right? No, just kidding. Anyway, that was for you. So, so what do you guys think? Most atheist nation? Japan, that's right. Did you know that that structure is only created in Japan? Yeah, I know. That's crazy, isn't it? I know. Why is that? It's because God is not like you and I. If you and I were God, we would create the structure around Israel, right? Because we tend to be nice to people who are nice to us. But God's not like you. And he's not like me. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm glad he's on the throne. Because if you and I were on the throne, none of us would be lost. We would look at earth and say, oh, well, we're voting you guys off the island for sure. We don't want you coming back into the universe. Bye-bye. Thanks. We love you, but no, right? We don't want to take that risk. But God says in his word in Romans 5.20, where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. And so God sends his most striking evidences to those who need him the most. He knew that the Japanese one day would forget his love and his grace. He knew that the Japanese would become the most atheist nation in the world. So like Jonah, he sent them a fish. And he sends you a message too. When you look at creation, it wasn't just good, but it was what? Now, technically, after God created woman, it was very good. So maybe she's really very good. But anyway, that's, that's my personal opinion. Uh, I think guys are okay, but I'm like, wow, woman's pretty amazing. So you guys have bigger corpus callosums. You can use both sides of your brain, stuff like that. You guys got all these really neat advantages. You live longer, right? really cool. And then on top of that, you have a bigger hypoglossal nerve. Did you know that? Compared to men. But that's the problem is it's like 
Women use 40,000 words a, a day. Men are like 25,000. When we come home from work, we're done. So we're like, hey, how was your day at work? Fine. <laughs> What'd you do? I worked. <laughs> well, anything happen? I was just work. Talk to me, right? She's been talking to Barney with the kids all day. She's got to use some words up. She's still got like 35,000 left to work. So you got to work with her, right? Talk a little bit more. More than just one word responses. But God gave mankind a job. Now, it's interesting. Did you know that Adam had a job before he got Eve? Very important thing to remember, guys, right? Job first, right? Then your woman, very important. But he also gave them a prescription for their diet. And what was that? What was it? Yeah. And when sin happened, what did God add? I'm glad you said vegetables. So many people say meat. And I'm like, no, that was after the flood. And why was there meat after the flood? They didn't have anything else to eat, right? Anyone been a diver? Anyone a diver? What happens when you go down to really significant depths? It's too much pressure, right? And if you had water pressure above the highest mountain, what would survive on the surface of the earth? I'll be pulverized, right? That was the whole point of the raven, right? He sends out the raven, sends out the dove. What was he hoping was going to be returning? Vegetation, right? But you don't get insta olive from the olive tree, right? It takes a little while for it to start growing. So what are you going to eat? What are you going to eat? Meat, right? That's all you're going to eat. And what if you eat Mr. and Mrs. Pig for one morning's breakfast? Then what happens? There's no more pigs, right, ever, because there was only two of those, right? So that was the thing, is that God gave it very specifically for that. But here's the original diet. Boom. So when I switch to that slide, boom, what comes into your mind? Wow, there's so much color, right? It's very interesting. Anyone, pineapple, yes, get your bromelain, your, your enzyme, right? So uh, does anyone know what causes you to be able to see color? You have something in your retina. Yeah, cones, that's right. Rods are for black and white. So cats have a lot of rods, but does anyone know who has a lot of cones, like massive amounts of cones? Bees actually not so much, but they, they see ultraviolet really good. Anyone? Dogs are pretty good, but do you know who's really good? Us, that's right. We're like the champion of cones. We're not very good at acuity, like birds of prey can see things like a mile away and stuff like that. But you and I are the champion of cones. Now, here's my question. How many different colors do you see in this diet? How many different colors are there? Almost endless, right? Almost endless. And who has the ability to appreciate that? Well, you. That's very interesting. But there's also not just a variety of colors, but what else is there a variety of, of up there? Tastes, and not just the four major tastes. What are the four major tastes? Sweet, sour, sour, bitter, All right? So, so there's everything in between. But here's the question. How many different tastes is meat? Well, it tastes like chicken, right? <laughs> it, well, it depends on what you season it with. Be honest, right? I mean, I can make anything taste like Jimmy Dean sausage by putting Jimmy Dean seasoning on it, right? So that's the concept, right, is that you have a vast, vast variety of tastes here. Any durian fans? Oh, wow, one. That's pretty amazing. Uh, usually it's not so much in a, a non-Asian crowd, but, you know, that's kind of a peculiar sort of taste. I, you either love it or hate it, and there's hotels that are like no durian, right, because it's very offensive to some people. I don't know, I'm one of those people that I like durian, but it's like most people either love it or hate it. I'm like, ah, it's okay. But the problem is, is that everyone like, it's like a religion. They try to proselytize you to durian. And I would like go to Thailand. They're like, oh, you need to try durian. I'm like, oh, no, no, I already tried it in Singapore. No, this is Thai durian. No, this is Malay durian. No, no, this is Vietnamese durian. No, this is Filipino durian. And I'm like, dude, it's all durian. <laughs> Just want to let you know it's like the same, like, Okay, you put it in ice cream, but it's still the same. So I, I personally think it tastes the same. It's like a sweet avocado with a really funny, funny smell. That's the best description. But anyway, spiky. Uh, it's a spiky sort of fruit. And that brings us to our next one is uh, there's a variety of tastes. And there's also a variety of what? Textures, right? So shake your, shake your neighbor's hand. Shake your neighbor's hand. Shake that. 
right? Shake your neighbor's hand. Did you know you just interfaced with the most complex part of their brain? Did you know that? Yes, it's true. You, you actually did. When you look at something called the homunculus, did I just make that up? Is that, is that a real word, homunculus? Yeah, we remember that, right, from med school. There's three things that take up the most space on your hard drive. Have you ever been like watching a video and something that says you have, no longer have enough room, right? So you go and you try to delete what? Yeah, pictures, videos, things that take up a lot of space, right? But that's the same concept with the homunculus, both sensory, here's sensory, here's motor, right? So what are the top three programs? Like number one, hands down, what is it? <laughs> it's the hands, right? So number one program is the hands. So this thing is very interesting because there's lots of different textures. How many different textures is meat? Well, it's like raw or cooked, right? I mean, it's not, not really that complex, right? But here, there's lots of different textures, and you can appreciate those. But what's interesting is that when you look at the human homunculus, like the actual neuroanatomy of your brain, right? When you look at the number one program, it's hand, and what's number two and number three? Yeah, tongue, right? So taste, and then eyes. Yeah, exactly. So your top three programs are hands, tongue, eyes, both motor and sensory. And what do you know? You need that for this. What a coinky dink. Maybe not. Go ahead and smile at your neighbor. Big smile. All right. What did you see there? Maybe you saw dentures, but in most people, what did you see there? What did you just see? Teeth. But what kind of teeth? What's the most common tooth in a human being's mouth? Does anyone know? You don't know? That's okay. Take a guess. It's all right. Not incisors, no. Molars. Did you know that? So did you know you have four rows of molars? And if you count premolars, that's five rows of molars. That's like more than half your mouth. Do you realize that? What's a molar structure? What's the structure of the molar? Now, he's way ahead. Like, he's like ahead. He's on slide four already. That's great. We'll talk later. Yeah. He's going to be a doctor. Just watch. So what, what's the structure of a molar? Big, big, surf, what kind of surface? Flat. It's a broad, flat surface. So what is a broad, flat tooth for? What's the function? Because structure is always related to function, right? For grinding. So, so it's for grinding, crushing. So what were you supposed to eat mostly? Uh-oh. Oh, beans. Oh, sorry, Dr. Gundry. Anyway, so I'm just saying, right? It's just, it, it is what it is, right? I, that's all I'm saying. It is what it is. So the majority of your mouth is millstones, basically, essentially, right? You don't got sharp canines unless you file them or something like that. But I would just challenge somebody. Let's say you did believe in evolution, okay? I would say to you, okay, I got a goat or a cow or whatever right up here. I would say, just come and kill this thing with just what nature gave you. No, would you be able to do that? Be t if you were Ramon, maybe you could, like headlock, kind of choke him out, right? Or something like that. But the average human being probably couldn't kill a cow or even a pig. The pig would probably roll over and want a belly rub, right? And then if you could kill it, you know what I would say to you then? Now I want you to eviscerate it and eat it with just what you got. Be tough, wouldn't it? Be tough. I'm just saying, you know. When you look at structure and function, it gives you an idea for design, right? And if you truly believe in God, right, you would think that way. But even if you didn't believe in God, evolution, right? I don't know if you were designed with these sort of hands, right? Your hands can discriminate between one millimeter of distance. Do you know that? When you do two-point discrimination on someone's back, it's very insensitive. On their hand, it's super duper sensitive. Your hands are designed for feeling, picking, gathering, and discriminating. Did you know that? I don't think you need that from me, do you? I mean, it's just like, just put on the barbecue, like nuke it, whatever, right? It's, just, it's hard to mess up, right? But when you look at your teeth, you see that too. But here's the question, where does digestion begin? Everyone says the mouth. I'm going to show you right now that it doesn't, okay? Imagine if you will. 
you are at home on vacation and your mom is baking your favorite food, whatever it is, apple pie, pad thai, curry, what, whatever it is, like uh, eggplant, uh, whatever you guys enjoy the most, right? Yeah, you like that? Okay, great. So you sneak downstairs and you take a look and nobody's there, right? And the apple pie is being baked. And you think, it's, oh, it's got like five minutes. Let me just get a little piece. No one's going to miss it, right? So you slowly take a little slice of the apple pie. You, you lift it out slowly. You kind of, kind of get it cool, right? So to cool it off fast, you take a big scoop of ice cream, almond, right? Soy dream, of course, right? Yeah, right. I know you guys don't do that. But anyway, you put that on the apple pie, and you go through, and you take a big bite, and you wake up, and it was a dream. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever eaten in your dream? Anyone? 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 Oh, don't lie. I know you have. Did you know? See, he's the only honest one here. So, Did you know that the entire digestive process can occur in a dream? If you were to imagine someone taking a big bite of a lemon, if I took a bite of a lemon, what would happen to all of you? Yeah, sour. What would happen to all of you? You'd all salivate. I should have brought the lemon, but anyway. So that's the thing, is it? where does digestion begin? It doesn't matter. Your, your salivary glands will squirt if you see a lemon being bitten into. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But, but the concept is, where does digestion begin? The digestive process starts even without food. Did you know that? You can smell food. It'll start. Your, your intestines will begin peristalsis with nothing in your mouth. Did you know that? Nothing. So where does it begin? In the brain, right? No brain, no digestion. And the question is, what is your brain designed for? We just looked at it. What do you think it's designed for? You're still not convinced. I'll convince you. It's all right. So what's this? Stomach, what's it for? Not so much digestion, but what is it for specifically? No, not really. Yeah, what is it, what is it mixed with the food? Like that, this little sphincter doesn't open until something happens here. Yeah, pH. So, so in order to digest protein, you need to split those proteins with an enzyme. And you have something called pepsin, and it needs to be converted to pepsinogen, right? You have a transfer of pepsinogen, pepsin, and basically that only happens with a low pH. So you need hydrochloric acid. Now here's my question. Who has more hydrochloric acid? This guy or this guy? Wow, on cue. What do you guys think? The lion, but how much more do you think? What's way? It's 10 times more. Did you know that? Did you know that the hydrochloric acid in this animal is 10 times greater than a human? So what does that tell you? Yeah, he eats meat, right? And did you know that your body will produce more hydrochloric acid if you eat meat? Did you know that? But it, yes, it will. It will produce more hydrochloric acid. But you know what else it will produce more of? Ulcers, reflux. Lots of other things, too. What's this little green thing here? What's the green thing right here? It's not bile. What, what's it called? Gallbladder. Yeah, it has bile. What's that for? Digesting fat. Digesting fat. Technically, it's emulsifying fat, but I'll, I'll accept that. Close enough. So do you think the design for this was to get a stone here and get pancreatitis and cholecystitis? Do you think that's the design? I don't think that's the design. But did you know that 33% of adults in America have gallstones? Do you think that's the design? Do you know how you make gallstones? I'll give you the recipe. Are you ready? How many have made rock candy? Anyone made rock candy? How do you make rock candy? Explain it to me. So you get lots of sugar, and then what? Boil it, concentrate it, and then what? How do you crystallize it? Yeah, you evaporate the water off. So here, it's very simple. Cholesterol 
is what the stones are made of, right? Cholesterol is the principal component of bile. That's what the body uses to digest it, to dissolve it, right? So here's the thing. How do you produce a higher concentration of cholesterol and stones? You eat more. Oh, more feet. Interesting. You're already your head. So you eat more fat, but what kind of fat do you want to eat to really make like gangbuster bile? Saturated fat. That's correct. And where do you find most saturated fat? Yeah, exactly. So then you create a high concentration, then you don't drink enough water, then what happens? Rock candy. Oh, right. The rock candy is not designed to be in you, but that's what happens all the time, right? So what do you think the design of this is for? Do you think it's designed for a bunch of saturated fat? And before you say coconut or palm, remember those are medium chain fatty acids. They're MUFAs, right? So they're not quite the same. They're, they're actually not even treated the same by the body. Did you know that? Did you know that the body does not have to create chylomicrons for those? But that's kind of a, another lecture. But basically, they're processed differently. That's all I'm saying. And that's why a lot of the literature is looking at things like Alzheimer's and coconut. Anyone looked at that? And the concept is, is you have insulin resistance, right? But did you know the medium chain fatty acids are not dependent on that mechanism? And the, the theory is, is that they can diffuse into the cell membrane. And this person who's basically cells have been starving, right? Because of the insulin resistance is that they can start to burn some of the medium chain fatty acids. They've seen some studies where people kind of start talking. They start awakening and all they did was replace the butter with coconut. That was it. So those are still kind of small studies, so stay tuned on those. But anyway, the concept is, is that you have this guy, you don't want gallstones, okay? So don't do that. What's this thing? The intestine, what's it for? Absorption. At this point, yes, we're absorption. And if you look at it very closely, it has these little finger-like projections. And what do those do? No, microscopic, not macroscopic. There's extra surface area, right? They're villi. They're extra surface area. Because if you want absorption, you want as much surface area as possible, right? So here's the concept. Your intestines are very warm, dark, and moist environment. So let's say, I'll, I'll do this in honor of Ramon. I made you chicken cacciatore. Right? You have to move your hands a little bit. If you're, if you, actually, if you're angry at somebody, I heard that you do that. So don't do that, actually, to someone who's Italian. So let's say I made you chicken cacciatore, and I've you know, taken the tomatoes, picked them straight off the vine. I've ground the uh, flour from uh, grains like myself, like fresh ground, and I've got everything ready. I've got made the pasta myself. And then, uh, is that the close of probation or something? I mean, what is, what is going on here? The, the to okay, got it. It's fine. Well, I got the next talk, so it's okay. <laughs> so anyway, I've made this for you, and I left the chicken thawing on the counter for 24 hours. You going to eat it? What are you worried about? Salmonella, right? Because bacteria multiplies in three conditions. You know what those conditions are? Warm, moist, dark. Oh, oh, wait a minute. What, uh, your, your intestines were what again? Warm. Yeah, see, that's what's going to happen to you. Yeah, don't eat, the, don't eat the old chicken. So warm, dark, and moist. Now, here's the other concept. Now, lions, tigers, they're huge. But here's my question. Even though a lion, this is like a lionette, this is like a mini lion. Generally, most lions are bigger, but maybe Adam was taller in this picture, so maybe it is to scale. But when you look at the digestive tract, who has a longer digestive tract, the lion or the man? But how much more? Did you know it's 300% longer? So the lion, on average, the carnivore, any carnivore, their digestive tract is three meters. Did you know that? Because they're designed to get the meat in, out. Well, not just rot. I mean, the main, the main issue is, is like when you look at colon cancer, they used to think it was fiber, but it's actually the meat protein in contact with the colonic wall for a long period of time. 
And if you have low fiber, right, you don't go as much. Like, how many people have gone camping? How many people like camping, right? What food do you take when you go camping? What's the traditional camping food? Hot dogs, right? And what kind of buns are, are in those hot dogs? What kind of buns are those? White, of course. What else do you take camping? S'mores, marshmallows, right? Potato chips, what else? No, 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 nobody does that. I mean, what is the normal world? Not us. I'm talking about the normal world. This is not the normal world. You bring steaks, right? Hamburgers, right? Yeah, and if you're a poor college student, what do you bring? Ramen noodles, Ramen noodles exactly. <laughs> now, how much, how much fiber does all of this have? Did you know when I went camping, I was in college, and I did not have a bowel movement for one week, even though we were drinking water and hiking all the time. Now, why didn't I have a bowel movement? I had no fiber. Like, we were eating hamburgers, hot dogs, s'mores, ramen noodles, soda, potato chips. And I was just like little fragments of fiber there. And when I finally went, I think everybody left the bathroom or something like that. I don't know what happened. But anyway, the concept is, is that your digestive tract is way, way longer than all the carnivores. And why is that? Well, I'll let you make the conclusion. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with this concept. I was in medical school with Dr. Issa, actually, and they had a combined class when they were talking about lactation, you know, breast is best, right? And uh, they had the dental students with us as the medical students, and this lady, she was like a PhD in like three different things, and she was like, look at this, better nutrition, look at this, higher IQ, look at this, less autoimmune diseases, Look at this, colostrum, no joke, right? So she kept going on and on. And finally, this really happened. I don't know if you remember this, Dr. Issa, but finally one of the dental students, he couldn't take it anymore. He finally stood up and he says, you've convinced me, I'm switching over. <laughs> true, true statement. <laughs> but which is funnier, you going back to drinking your own species milk or you're drinking another species milk? I'm just saying, you just think about it, right? Have you come into the secret place of the snow, or have you seen the storehouses of the ice drops? Does anyone know what the secret of the snow is? I'll show you. Did you know the second law of thermodynamics? You know what that is? It says if you remove energy from a system, it becomes less orderly. If you add energy, you can make it more orderly, right? Except for snowflakes. Did you know that? When they cool, they become not just more orderly, but they become perfect. And in fact, every snowflake, even though it's unique, is designed after one number. Does it, can anyone see the number that it's designed after? What number is it designed after? When were you created? Six days. I'm just saying. I believe that God designs each one of us to be unique. We all have strengths and weaknesses, right? We all have talents, but we are all perfect in Him, right? That's the secret of the snow. But when we look at the concept of where we are now, not everything is good. Not everything is good. And I'll ask you this question. How many people think coconuts are bad? How many people think coconuts are good? How many people are not answering? No, just kidding. So where do coconuts grow? We talked about this. Do they need cultivation? No, oh, they just grow, right? So here's the question. What environment are you most likely to get dehydrated and heat stroke in? Warm tropical, right? So here's the thing. Check this out. University of Florida. They were accused of using performance enhancing substances. Did you know that? Many, many years ago. And what they were doing is they were using something before their games and during their games and they were just winning all their games. Does anyone know what it was? It wasn't coconut water. I wish it was coconut water. It was not. Does anyone know what it was? It's Gatorade. You know why they named it Gatorade? Well, it's the University of Florida. Their mascot is the gator, right? So it's Gatorade, right? So that's, that's what they came up with. What's Gatorade? Water. 
Sugar. What else? Electrolytes. Okay. What's coconut water? Water. Sugar. Electrolytes. Right? But watch this. Check this out. When you are vomiting and you have diarrhea, right? If you're vomiting up everything, can you drink stuff? Not always, right? So what do you do for that person? IV, IV right? And did you know that you can't put just anything in that IV? You'll kill somebody, right? It has to be sterile. It has to be osmolarity, osmolality, concentration, pH. Everything has to be perfect. Did you know that? How many of you knew that you could put coconut water directly in your vein unchanged? It's true. It's no joke. There's that Tammy Thomas published a study on it our, our, you know, when we were in med school. It's true. You just need a little filter so you don't get like coconut embolus, you know, or something like that. So just a little filter there. But did you know you can put that in your vein unchanged? And did you know when you vomit and have diarrhea, do you know what electrolyte is most important that you're losing? Yeah, you're losing some sodium, but what's the big player when you start vomiting? Yeah, potassium, exactly. And what food's high in potassium? Everyone says bananas. I'm convinced that the marketing director for Chiquita was a genius because even though people know nothing about health, Doc, I do know that bananas have potassium. Yes, they know that. Even though bananas are like number 86 on the list out of 100. Navy beans, way more. Guacamole, way more. What do you think is super high in potassium? coconut water and what are you going to need when you're vomiting and having diarrhea potassium and wait for it did you know the inside of that coconut is sterile coincidence i think not could it be that somebody knew that you needed potassium let's close out what are beasts birds plants fish what do they all hold in common I have it up on the slide there as a, as a clue. Yeah, they have DNA. Who invented DNA? Who invented DNA? Who, or who, who discovered DNA? God invented DNA, but who discovered it? Watson and Crick, right? What did they believe? They were atheists. After they discovered it, did their beliefs change? It did. Do you know what it changed to? What do you think it changed to? They weren't atheists anymore. No, they weren't theists. No, they weren't deists. They believe that aliens came and started life on planet Earth. This is true. You can look it up. I'm telling you. That's what they believe. They believe in panspermia. They believe that aliens came and started life in different places on Earth. But see, my question for doctors Watson and Crick is who invented the aliens? And that's the lesson of the story is I can show you information, but it may not result in transformation. And that's my appeal. No matter how much information you have, there's something wrong with you and I. Did you know in nature, everything serves something else except for one thing? Sin has marred God's perfect work, yet that handwriting remains. Even now, how many created things? All created things declare the glory of His excellence. There is nothing except for what? You and me. Do you realize that? I believe in the Adventist church. We have way too much knowledge. We have way too much knowledge. But we have very little actual change in our lives. You know, we're like the Athenians. We want to hear or tell some new thing. We go to camp meeting, like, oh, you see, I heard this guy, he's so entertaining, he's so new, he's whatever. We're just like seminar junkies, you know? But it doesn't change anything we do. It doesn't change our lifestyle. It doesn't change our hearts. Because I'm telling you, only Christ can change your heart. And I don't know about you, but when I look at nature, I see a God who not only is concerned about my physical well-being, but like the Japanese, he's concerned about saving me. Like the coconut, he wants to have a good time at the beach, right? He loves me, and he's designed me a certain way. And the problem is, guys, I'm not in harmony with that design. I'm the only thing out of harmony with that design. You know what's funny? 
When you look at racehorses, these guys aren't cheap, right? I mean, they're millions of dollars. Do, have you ever heard someone say, yeah, my, my racehorse is lacto-ovo. M- mine's like pescatarian. No! They're one species. Did you know we're the only species that has like 18,000 different diets? I'm doing the FODMAP diet. There's a South Beach diet, the Atkins diet, the keto, there's low carb, no high carb. What, it's just like, we're crazy. Do you realize that? There's blood type diets now. Did you know that? We're insane. We need to come back to God's original design. And the first thing that we need to do is this. Do you realize that? Yes, we're all selfish. That's right. Did you hear that? That's the issue. I want you to know that the reason why I'm sharing today is less for you and more for me because I'm selfish. And I force myself to do something where I'm not paid at least once a month to remind me of who's on the throne. And that's what I would like to challenge you with. I would like to challenge you. I call you out right now. 95% of your time, money, and your resources is to benefit yourself or your family, true or false? True. We're right here, guys. And we're not going home until that's gone. So I, I want to make an appeal to you. I want you to look in your mind and your heart and say, God, is there some way I can help someone who needs help around me? Maybe they need the talents that you have. And I'm going to challenge you to do it with no benefit to yourself. Just doing something unselfish every day. If that's your decision, please stand with me as we pray. <laughs> Loving Father in heaven, Lord, you are God. And the evidence is abundant. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us to come back into harmony with the rest of creation, Lord. Lord, break our hearts. Give us not just information, but give us transformation. Give us inspiration, Lord. Give us the assurance that you will help us to be different, Lord. We surrender our lives to you. Help us not to just think 95% of the time just on us and on our families. Like Soren was saying, we pat ourselves on the back when we do a mission trip once every five years, Lord. Help us to reach out to our neighbors. Help us to reach out to those around us that don't have the truth, Lord. And help us to do it with no alternative motive so that we might reflect your character. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take about a five-minute break or we'll start again with our special feature. Give him, give him 10 minutes.